Hi guys, this is Andy from Mobile Must Have. In this video, we're gonna talk about a new feature from Peplink called Synergy Mode. So Synergy Mode is going to be on the latest firmware from Peplink, it's on 8.3. At the time of this video dropping, I'm running the beta version, kind of testing and showing how this works, uh, but it should be coming out in days if you're watching this right when we launch this video. This feature is all about bonding two peplinks together. So if you have one already and you wanted to add a second one for either more coverage, another data plan, uh, just kind of just more options, there's a really easy way to do that now and control everything from one interface. And that's what the key feature is here. So first we're gonna talk about the use cases for it. Then I'll show you my setup and kind of go over some of the hardware requirements to set this up and then go over the software interface for it too. Don't worry, this isn't tech heavy. It's actually pretty simple to do. Um, it's really, the most complicated thing is just getting to Peplink devices and they're pretty easy to link after that. So first let's talk about use cases. This is all about adding and expanding your ability to connect to other things. If you had something like a Transit Duo or a dual modem device, adding a third device, you can now add a 5G router. You could add just another router to get Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, for example. You can have all three. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why you might want to do this. This is a really great way to add a 5G modem to something like the Transit. Um, and we can talk about a couple different options there. But this is now really a great way to do that. From a physical setup standpoint, um, I'll go over my particular setup, but we're gonna do some generic terms here. Um, the main router that you typically connect to that has Mix Speed Vision set up on, has all your, your main system set up on, we're gonna call that our primary router. And then there's going to be a second router, right? This is the one we are, we're adding into our main network and we'll call that a secondary router. Uh, it doesn't really matter which ones you use. I would use your latest router, your newest one as your primary. If we're looking at something like the Transit Duo and then comparing that to like a BR1 Pro, the BR1 Pro is gonna have faster processors, it's gonna have a faster kind of memory overall, and that might be a better system to use as your primary hub over a older generation, still very capable, but older generation device, you might just get better performance on that. Uh, so look at the latest device, make sure the one with the best specs is maybe set up as your primary, especially now that you can control everything the one with the best specs is probably gonna be your better primary router. Uh, in my particular example here and my setup, I am in the middle of upgrading my internet and RRV um, to a BR2, which is a dual 5G modem, very excited. I have a whole playlist I'm prepping to show you guys kind of my installation, my upgrade process, we're doing new antennas, we're bringing Starlink, really cool. So I'll link um, that playlist here once, once we get that going but my primary is gonna be a BR2, and then I'm connecting a BR1 as a secondary router. Now to connect these two, everything needs to have power and antennas, like always, there's no change there. They are going to be functioning independently, so make sure both of them can get their own power and they have all the antennas they need. Now the key thing for connecting them is where to put the ethernet cable. You do need to have an ethernet cable to do synergy mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the secondary router and we're gonna plug in the LAN port, LAN, and then we're gonna go into the WAN port of your primary device. So basically LAN is internet out. So we're gonna take the internet out of the secondary and it's gonna go in as a source, an internet source into the WAN port of our primary device. And that's all we're gonna do from a hardware standpoint. We wanna make sure everything's turned on um, and we're gonna leave it like that for now. Now we're gonna to move to the software side of the setup. We've done our hardware, we've connected our ethernet, and now we're gonna to move to the computer. So let's jump in. Uh, this is gonna be the console, our, our login, our admin page to our primary device. Like I said before, I'm running a BR2. That is a dual modem device, so I have two cell modems. This also has support for a USB modem, which you may or may not have depending on your device. And we can see a lot of other options I've got currently disabled down below. But this is stock, this is a, I just factory reset this device, so it's all very, very basic at this point. You do need to make sure both of your devices are running 8.3. Um, and if you want to start, you don't have to factory reset yours. I did that for this particular demo, um, but you do need to factory reset the secondary device, which we'll get to in a second. 
First step for here is really quite simple. Um, we just want to confirm that everything is kind of connected. So I've got my, my cell one and cell two connected. We can see those US one, USB one is good, that's connected. The main thing we're looking for is my WAN one. That is where I've connected the ethernet cable into WAN one for my primary, and it goes to the LAN of the secondary. We can see that's in standby. If I drag that into priority one, it, um, it turns green, so we see it's connected, it's connected to the internet, but we really can't see what it's connecting to. We can't, if I click into it, um, it gives me standard WAN information, but that's all it's really giving me. It's, it's all local to the BR2, my primary device. The second step here is we're gonna factory reset our secondary device. Um, you can do that a couple ways. You can, while it's powered on, you can hold the reset button down for 20 seconds. You'll see the, the status light turn to solid red and then you can wait for that to boot back up. Um, before you do a factory reset, I do suggest grabbing a configuration file, assuming you've already set that device up. That way, if you ever need to fall back to how it was already done, the configuration file, you can upload it and boom, everything, all Wi-Fi settings, password, everything kind of re-uploads, super easy. But for this particular sake, secondary device starting from a factory reset is the easiest way to go. Once that secondary device is factory reset, on the primary device, so again, the screen I'm already on, I'm gonna go over to network. Uh, I'm gonna go down on the left side to WAN. And then the very bottom is our new feature. It is the Synergy controller. I'm going to change that to enabled on WAN one. You might only have one WAN, select that one. If you wanna do it on both, because you're connecting a lot of stuff, you can do that. I only need it on my first WAN, so that's what I'm gonna select. And they're gonna hit save. And then up at the top, I'm gonna to hit apply changes. Now, uh, PepWave says this can take up to five minutes. You might have to be patient. Um, making that factory reset of your secondary device up front will definitely speed this up too. Um, and you can see like mine's already synced. That's how fast it was in real time with this all set. So let's look at what basically this does for us. So now the big change here is I still have cell one, cell two, USB just as before, but instead of WAN one, I now see a new cellular option. It's labeled number four, kind of down here on the status, and then it says cellular, and then basically a serial number. That's the serial number of my BR1, of my secondary device. And now I can see that's connected to Verizon Wireless. So, and then if I look down from there, WAN1 connected to a serial number. So I can even see it starts to say Synergy right there. So now instead of just seeing WAN1 and that's connected to some other source, right? I can now see that's connected to a PEP link and I can control those WAN sources directly. So if I didn't want that cell to be active, I can put it into priority two and it's now standby. Um, so that's really, really cool. I can now control what that is. And that's really important if you're in an area that doesn't have coverage from maybe Verizon and, or it's really saturated and you wanna turn Verizon off. It just makes it really, really easy to manage now that it's all in one place. But not only am I able to manage the cell stuff here, I'm also able to manage a Wi-Fi as WAN via that device. I'm also able to manage as WAN port. So if there was another WAN port for, let's say Starlink and I needed one, or a T-Mobile Home or whatever you're using, you now have another WAN port that you can kind of help merge all this stuff together. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can control that now all from one particular place. And that's the key thing here. All right, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on email at info at mobilemusthave.com. We are also available live with a human person on chat on our website, too, which you can find in the bottom right-hand corner. All right, guys, hope to see you guys all on the road. Bye.